Welcome everybody to Moderate Mods and today we're taking a look or uh, should I say dealing with the 1973 AMC Gremlin X. Now this is a notorious car from back in the 70s because America to deal with the fuel crisis in the early 70s came out with numerous of uh, small cars. You had Ford with the Pinto, you had Chevrolet with the Vega, even AMC had another one in the form of the Pacer and uh, yeah, they were all in response to the fuel crisis, and most of them were hopeless. And this is sort of in that regard, uh, especially with uh, the uh, lesser engine versions. Thankfully, this has the most powerful version that you could get in this car, but it certainly didn't make it a uh, a small compact, you know, economy car anymore with the uh, engine that it now has. So, uh, yeah. Let's just firstly take a look at the uh, stats. So uh, yeah, there are the stats. Reasonable amount of acceleration and speed. Handling and braking isn't really all that much worse than say any muscle cars from that period. But that's purely because it weighs 2,840 pounds, so about the same kind of weight as an original Mustang. But it only has 150 horsepower and 245 pounds feet of torque from a 5 litre V8 engine. So uh, yeah, it, that engine did at least make this the most powerful subcompact at the time in America, but yeah, that's not really saying much when you know your Pintos and your Vegas were far less powerful. Uh, I'm actually a fan of the Vega in some regards, but then again, I don't have to deal with the issues that that car had in real life to enjoy it. But yeah, this is easily my favourite of the subcompacts from America in the 70s, at least of the ones that we've had on the Forza game before. So yeah, let's see what it can do. Unfortunately, it is saddled only with a three-speed gearbox, so even though it's got decent revs and decent amount of power and torque, it really doesn't have the gearbox to uh, make the most of it. And because it's got very little in the way of weight over the rear, because it's basically a uh, car with a uh, chopped end off, off of it, because AMC had to make do with very limited resources back in the day. So they used to use reuse bodies, engines, drivetrains, and the like for various different vehicles. So they basically just chopped the end off of one of their uh, larger cars and made this subcompact. That's why it's got one of the longest bonnets and one of the shortest rear ends for a uh, car of this type. But at least the engine does make the most of the uh, lacking in weight. It's one thing that at least the subcompacts did get right in America was that they weren't overly heavy. Obviously the Pacer is the exception to that rule, but the Vega, the Pinto and this were reasonably lightweight. Which quite frankly surprised me given that American cars even back in the 70s were usually way, way too heavy. Yeah, this for free speed gearbox is really rather awful. We're already up to the rev limit at around 93 miles an hour. But our first lap time of 1 minute 23.233 seconds is reasonably good. It does roll around a fair bit as you can see though. One thing this car did have over, over the subcompacts sub from this period was safety. This is easily safer than a Vega or a Pinto. Uh, and at least if it got hit in the rear end it wouldn't explode like a Pinto would. So does have that going for it. But there were uh, some crash tests taking place between large cars from the same manufacturer that was producing their uh, from the produ also producing their subcompact. So you had a Ford Pinto go up against one of their large Fords and it yeah. <laughs> well it nearly had the car going the big car going through the car so much that it was hitting the rear end and then the Vega was even worse and, but this was able to withstand the larger car's impact to a fairly decent degree considering it's got no airbags or anything like that. But yeah that 70s era was really rather a strange period for American car history. 1 minute 15.776 seconds off for our second lap which is a sizable improvement. Yeah, very few American cars from the 70s were much good, to be honest. Well known as the Malays era. Like, cars were just woefully underpowered, very ugly, and didn't really offer anything for consumers. 
which is in part one reason why they, the Japanese automakers were able to improve their uh, market share in America because they just walked over the American domestics because they were more reliable, they were faster, they were better engineered and they were generally more fun to drive. Bags of understeer. It's got an extremely large V8 up front. Because of the gearbox, it just takes forever to get any kind of speed. No improvement that final time there, but that time is reasonably good but yeah this car can clearly have uh, a lot more done to it to make it a uh, better and more enjoyable car to drive so yeah let's get to the garage and see what we can do so this is the car in all of its glory and yeah you can really tell that this is clearly a larger car that's had the rear end uh, chopped in half because it's got such a long bonnet such a short rear end and uh, yeah plenty of room in terms of interior Certainly a, 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 you know, spacious small car, or small car with air quotation marks in it, because, yeah, a small car from Japan or the Euro or Europe would be uh, even smaller than that. But let's uh, firstly take a look at the acceleration times and the top speed. So stock, it can do 0 to 169.6 seconds, 0 to 125.1 seconds, and a top speed of 113 miles an hour. Again, easily the best in its class from the period. Uh, maybe not in terms of top speed. I think the Vega might be quicker at the, at the top end, but I doubt it's quicker in terms of not 60 or not 100 times because it has less power and uh, certainly less in the way of torque because it doesn't have a big bulky V8. Uh, but yeah, nonetheless, let's see what we can swap into this car. So we've got a whole host of engines, but I f fear that most of them yeah, are going to be uh, way too powerful for this car. A uh, couple of V8s though, so it wouldn't be unreasonable to uh, swap a V8 into this, given it does have one already. But I feel that would be a uh, too big of a job, really, for such a classic car like this. Turbochargers, no. Supercharger, uh, not really. Adds a hell of a lot of weight and ruins the balance overall. So I think we'll keep the original engine, the original drivetrain. We will swap out to a new gearbox though. We'll give it this gearbox, That'll improve a uh, yeah, top speed, and we'll make the engine larger. That's a bit of a jump, it goes from 5.4 to 5.9 to 7.1. That's weird. <laughs> uh, we'll just go up to 5.4, just give it a little bit of extra power, we'll give it a uh, street exhaust, street intake, street, oh well, sport intake manifold, Give it a sporty carburetta, street ignition, uh, and I think we'll leave it at that to be honest. Yeah, so that's giving it a bit of extra horsepower, not a huge amount, but enough. Uh, we'll get upgrade the brakes, the street brakes. We'll upgrade the suspension to street suspension because obviously it was rolling around a fair old bit. Give it sporty rear and front roll bars. We'll knock a bit of weight out. 60 pounds is a decent amount. Help it weigh a little bit less. Give it a street clutch and we'll give it a racing driver line to knock out even more weight. And then we'll widen the tyres because these are quite skinny tyres to be honest. 205s is not very much for here. Quite a torquey. Uh, low revving V8 so uh, yeah, we'll go to 245s rear and 235s front don't need to improve the tread because it's got a reasonable amount of grip already and yeah there we go only 17,250 credits spent we've gone up 25 horsepower we've knocked out ooh, 24, 74 extra pounds so uh, yeah that's pretty good we've not come out of our uh, class though which pretty much is always the case for the series. Let's check the acceleration. 
So now we can do 0 to 16 8.229 seconds, so that's more than a second quicker. We can do 0 to 120.077 seconds, so that's about 5 seconds quicker to 100. And we're now got a top speed of 129 miles an hour, so that's 16 miles an hour quicker. So uh, yeah, that is fairly impressive for the moderate amount of mods that we've given this. But nonetheless, let's get back onto the circuit and see what this car can do. So like I said, we're still in D-Class, but now the handling and braking has been improved. The acceleration definitely has been improved. The launch is slightly better and the top speed is better as well. And uh, yeah, there we go, there the stats. So uh, yeah, we haven't really improved the uh, front to rear uh, weight bias. So yeah, it might well have still a bit of understeer, but the wider tyres should hopefully make that a uh, less of an issue. And uh, yeah, the extra power and the extra torque with the... Uh, Slight weight reduction is certainly also going to help as well, so uh, yeah, really interested to see what this can do in comparison to what it did originally. So obviously our fastest time uh, in the stock car was 1 minute 15.776 seconds, which is reasonable. Uh, but yeah, it's going to be interesting to see how much we can improve on that. Definitely got a more sprightly launch. throwing away as much power through those rear wheels as we were in a uh, in the stock foot version. So yeah, as much as I have slated the uh, era that this car is from, I certainly wouldn't say no to more cars from this era because there are some interesting vehicles from this period, this being one of them. And uh, yeah, at the end of the day, I do like rubbish vehicles. I know it probably sounds stupid, but I really do like cars that are deeply flawed. I find them interesting, and especially in terms of you know when it comes to racing and just generally driving. So yeah, I wouldn't say no to more cars from this era because we really don't have all that many in the way of 70s cars. But yeah, this is easily one of the standouts from that period. But yeah, I certainly would like to say the Pinto back. Not had that six four spot spot four. And, uh, yeah, certainly plenty to talk about with that Pinto. Not just the fact that it explodes from the rear end when it's slightly hit. But yeah, as you can see, just on this part of the uh, circuit, we're certainly faster. And yeah, one minute nineteen point eight three zero seconds is our first lap time, which is only just over four seconds slower than the fastest time we had in this in stop form. So yeah, we're looking on for a decent improvement. But it doesn't have the most amount of grip from the rear end that I would like. It seems to slide around still a little bit. Maybe some even wider tyres would have been more appropriate, but the wider you go, the more it is to, you know, maintain and the like, which isn't really a moderate mod if you think about it mods need to be on the cheap and this has certainly been done on the cheap it's undoubtedly quicker than it was last time even if it still does have some understeer issues it's definitely got more speed on this straight One minute twelve point three three nine is our second lap time, so we're more than three seconds quicker than the stock car's fastest lap time. So let's see if we can improve upon that on this final lap. Big problem with these cars from the period though was you could feel that they were cheap. Obviously they were cheap to buy and somewhat cheap to run but they also felt cheap whereas Japanese and European cars from the period might well have been the same kind of price but they did feel either more advanced or at least had more creature comforts going through. I mean this doesn't even have a rev limiter on it despite the well I say rev limiter, rev counter on it despite it being a manual car so uh, yeah it's been rather lazy in, in a lot of ways to be honest but I can't really blame AMC because like I said they do have limited resources they were selling cars cheap but they didn't really make all that much profit on each car that they sold so 
it's understandable that they cut corners, but that certainly wasn't a, uh, a reason for uh, the bigger manufacturers to do such a thing. But there we go, 1 minute 12.439 is our final lap time. I think we were slightly quicker with the, uh, uh, the lap time that we uh, had a collision on. But that is still nonetheless more than 3 seconds quicker than the uh, standard car. And uh, yeah, it was definitely a quicker car on in terms of straight line speed. Handled slightly better as well, it didn't understeer quite as much. And uh, yeah, definitely had less in the way of oversteer as well. And uh, yeah, just a generally more enjoyable car to drive purely because it also has a 4 speed gearbox now. So you've got more gears to play around with, meaning you can uh, use the power more often and get more from it as well. So. Uh, yeah, an overall decent upgrade. Uh, not my favourite that we've done on the series so far, but then again, it's not even my favourite car that we've done on the series so far either. But yeah, still a uh, solid all-round car, and uh, yeah, definitely one of the more interesting vehicles from the 70s that are on this game or in general. Nonetheless, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.